Hey guys, it's Jessica here. For today's video, I am going to be visiting the Filipino Soldiers Memorial Monument here in Korea. If you guys didn't know, Philippines is actually one of the 16 countries that dispatched troops of soldiers here in Korea during the Korean War. As a person who had been living in both Korea and the Philippines for a long amount of time, the fact that the Philippines and Korea has some kind of link in our history especially touches me and it really creates a lot of emotional sentiments on me. So I thought that I would make this video to raise awareness about our history where we have some kind of connection to each other and also because as far as I know there are two Filipino soldiers memorial monuments here in Korea one is in Yeoncheon which is my grandma's hometown so I am very familiar with that place and the other one is located here in Goyang city which is a city that I currently live in so I'm also really familiar with this place and the fact fact that the two memorial monuments being placed in these places was like a signal for me that I really had to make a visit. Anyways, without further ado, let's just head to the memorial monument site here in Goyang. I just arrived guys. It's just right beside the road. So it's quite noisy and they're renovating it. Wow, it's huge! This monument was built in 1974 by the Department of Defense in Korea. The 50 people carved in the relief symbolizes the people of Korea who overcame despair and frustration from the war. On the relief placed on the center of the upper monument expresses the unique folk culture of the Philippines and its people as well. This monument is located by the Tongin Road, which means unification road that leads to the very north of South Korea. It was named that way in the hopes of reunifying our country. Monument dedicated to the Philippine Armed Forces in the Korean War. Wow, this is beautiful. Over here, you can see the very detailed information on how the Filipino soldiers were sent to Korea and how they actually participated in the war. You know, there's the timeline, and I'm very impressed about how specific it is. So this monument is just on the, I would say, valley area here in the city of Goyang. And although I live in Goyang, it actually took me an hour <laughs> more than an hour to arrive here because you know Goyang is a big city and I came through a public transportation and what I was surprised of is that the nearest bus station of this place its name is Philippines Korean War Monument so it was very easy for me to um, find this place so this is I think where they put the list of the names of soldiers who sacrificed during the Korean War and I would like to send my love and express condolences to these brave soldiers and also to the family members of them I actually got a comment from one of you who was a family of a war veteran who joined the Korean War and I told him that I will try to find his father's name when I visit this place his father's name is Francisco Vega Bonifacio. Nineteen. I see a family name Bonifacio, but the next name followed by that is Tumeris. Tumeris. This one. This is what I see. I'm not sure if that's your father's name, but I am here and I hope uh, this video will make your heart warm. And this person who left a comment about his father also told me that the Korean government is constantly giving support to the families of those war veterans. Not only financially, but through other various ways. I'm thankful that the Korean government is being grateful and expressing their thanks to everyone who shed blood for our country. So I'd like to talk more about the participation of the Filipino troops during the Korean War. The Philippines is actually the first country in Asia to dispatch troops in Korea by the time. And they came through the Busan port. When they first came here, they underwent a training to adjust themselves in the environment and also to get a military training along with other soldiers. 
the time when the Filipino soldiers were sent to Korea, it was only four years after the Philippines declared its independence from the states. And also, as far as I know, that was a time when the Philippines was regarded as the richest country in Asia. And also one important um, information is that it was their first time to ever send troops outside of the Philippines. So the first ever foreign country that they dispatched troops to was Korea. And now you guys might be wondering why? Yeah, why? And you know, there are very detailed reasons behind it, which I don't think I can mention everything because then this might be just like a history lecture class but I will link down uh, some of the references and sources that you could check out if you're more interested to know deeply about this history between Korea and the Philippines and I'm not seeing this from a political point of view of course and I'm trying to you know putting myself into the shoes of the soldiers who came here it was like a foreign country it was cold I don't know, maybe they didn't even know what Korea is by the time because Korea by the time was in its most poor state and most perplexed, most confused, most sad state because it was not so long after the Japanese um, occupation period and war was going on. So I really respect these Filipino soldiers who, who are so brave and so courageous to fight for our side. It's such an honor. We will never forget that. It should never, never ever be forgotten. In fact, it should be honored. We should always honor our past and learn from it while still living the present. War is something that really makes you think, you know, and at the same time, something that makes you very thankful that wars are not happening that violently uh, nowadays. It still is, but it's not as rampant as it was uh, back then. I feel like nowadays, or even before, we are just unconsciously building these kind of walls around us where we see everything outside that wall as our enemies. Although I do acknowledge that it's also in our human nature to be, to be taking sides and to be wanting to belong in one side. At the same time, it's also in our nature to always seek for connection, positive connections. You know, it's an irony, you know, where you want to take sides, but at the same time, you still seek for connection. But I think what is clear is that we all wouldn't exist without one another. You know, just like how there's no happiness if there's no sadness. Hence the cliche saying, we are one. That's very cliche, but you know, sometimes cliches are cliches for a reason. Alright guys, so that would be the end of this video. I hope you guys found this video somewhat informative and I hope this was a time where we, you know, all get to talk about history and remember history together. And I really do hope that the Philippines and Korea will continue to make positive connections with each other. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!